In this tutorial, we're going to go over how to create a tool library and a set of tools inside of Fusion 360. First and foremost is when you open up Fusion 360, you are currently in the design workspace. We need to change the workspace from design over to the manufacturing workspace. Once we are here, you will notice that your toolbar has changed to all the various tools that are associated with manufacturing or computer-aided manufacturing. What we are going to take a look at today is the Manage to Tool Library button. Once you have opened up your tool library, you will notice that there is a whole variety of different things that can be found in the tree. By default, Fusion 360 has brought in a Fusion 360 library. And then in addition, you will also notice that you have a local library. Newer versions of Fusion 360 also have the ability to have cloud-based tool libraries. If you do not see cloud here in your tree, is you can actually close this dialog window here, come up to your preferences, And in the manufacturing preferences, you can enable cloud-based libraries by checking this box. Going back to our tool library, the benefit of having a cloud-based tool library is regardless of what computer you are programming on, is all of your tools will be there. In today's lesson, we are going to create a new tool library inside of our cloud. To do this, we are going to right click on the word cloud and we are going to go up to new library. Our library will be called engineering class. Afterwards, press enter on the keyboard to lock it into place. Notice currently there are no tools inside that engineering class tool library because obviously we just created it. We can add tools to this library from other libraries if we had those available to us. So for example, if I wanted to copy a tool from my BHS library is I can simply right click on that tool, go to copy tool. And then when I open up my new tool library is I can actually right click again and paste that tool into place. So interesting enough is you can actually move tools around between libraries. You can duplicate them. You can do other things inside of it. But for today's lesson, we are going to go over how to create a new tool in our newly created library. At the very top of our page, you are going to click on the plus button. And then notice we have this new dialog box here, which shows us a whole variety of pictograms of what type of tools are available to make. Notice Fusion 360 categorizes these tool lists into milling, hole making, turning style tools for lathes, cutting style tools for flat plates, probing tools for measurement, and then also tool holders, which are directly associated to milling tools and hole making tools on a mill. For this particular example, we are going to be choosing a drill bit. So we are going to select the drill pictogram. Notice in our new dialog box is we have a little pictogram on the right hand side of what our drill bit is going to look like. On the left hand side, we have some edit windows that we are going to need to fill out from the information that we find on our vendor's website. So let's take a look at that now. Over on McMaster Car's website, I selected a short length drill bit, also referred as a stub length drill bit. These drill bits are commonly used in machining because of their short length. Let's first take a look at McMaster's description of this drill bit because this will give us an idea of what our description will look like. Their description, which is highlighted in blue, 
is telling us that this tool is 7 30 seconds in diameter and it's also got a 2 and 3 eighths overall length. However, this description doesn't really define this drill bit fully. With that in mind, we're going to take a look at the material that this drill bit is made out of. The material that this drill bit is made out of is high speed steel, also referred as HSS. And it also has a black oxide coating applied to it. In addition to its overall length, which we already saw in the description, is it also has a maximum drilling depth or a length of cut of 920 thousandths. In addition, this particular tool has a 135 degree included point angle and it's a right hand cut. So let's jump over to Fusion 360 and let's develop our own description of this tool. Inside of Fusion 360, we are going to take the information that we found on McMaster's website and we are going to create our own description of this tool. So let's first start with its diameter. Its diameter was 730 seconds. The material that it was made out of, high speed steel, which is abbreviated as HSS. And then it is also has a black oxide coating, which I abbreviated as BO. This is a drill. We can label this as a drill and we can put drill in here or we can also indicate stub drill or jobber drill depending on its length. But realistically, it doesn't matter because all that information will be specified in our cutter tab. With that in mind, we can also put indicators in here of its overall length. And our overall length was two and three eighths. And also the length of cut, abbreviated as LOC, was 920 thousandths. The purpose of our description is so when we are done programming, we can create a setup sheet and the person that's going to be setting up our CNC machine can actually go and find this particular tool. So having a good description will help us later on being able to locate that tool. The next edit field is our vendor field. Our vendor for this particular drill bit is McMaster Car. And after that, we need to figure out its product ID. Well, the product ID is the part number that McMaster car uses to associate it with. If we go onto their website, you will notice this number right after the stock information. And this alphanumeric number is their part number. So we are going to control C and control V the Fusion 360. Lastly, the product link is the hyperlink that is associated with this particular tool for the web address. And we are going to do the same thing on McMaster's website is go right into the address bar and control C and control V inside of Fusion 360. Now that we have the general tab filled out, we're going to take a look at our cutter tab. The cutter tab is directly associated with the information that we just typed in the general tab. This is a drill bit, so we are going to leave this drop down menu alone. We are measuring in inches. However, if you wanted to measure in millimeters, you can click on this drop down menu and select millimeters. This tool is a right handed tool, which will create a MO3 command, which will turn the spindle on clockwise. However, if you were dealing with a left-handed drill bit or a left-handed tap, is you can unselect this and this will actually create an MO4 command inside of your G-code. The number of flutes on this particular cutter is two flutes. 
So we're going to change that to two flutes. And the flutes are basically the how many cutting edges does this tool have? Well, most drill bits will have two cutting edges. There are some three fluted uh, drill bits out there. However, most of them are two flutes. And then next is what material is this drill bit made out of? If you click on the down window here, is notice there's a whole variety of different options. The vast majority of the time I use high-speed steel or carbide. Both high-speed steel and carbide can have a whole variety of different coatings applied to them. However, high-speed steel and carbide are generally the two main materials that our cutting tools are made out of. So this particular cutting tool is made out of high-speed steel, so I'll leave that alone. And then next, let's take a look at the geometry of this cutting tool. The diameter of this cutting tool is 7 seconds. And if you don't know the decimal equivalent of 7 seconds, that's okay, because we can actually type our fraction into Fusion 360 and press enter on the keyboard, and Fusion 360 will automatically calculate that for us. Automatically, Fusion 360 has put in the tool diameter as the drill bit's shaft diameter. However, if you're dealing with a silver and dimming drill bit, which has a reduced shaft diameter, is you can manually type that information in there to override it. The next thing that we're going to look at is our tip angle. And notice on the pictogram down here, they're measuring from flute to flute, which is called an included angle. And according to McMaster's website, that was a 135 included angle. Its overall length, if you remember, was 2 and 3 eighths. So we're going to type 2 and 3 eighths. But notice when I type 2, two and 3 eighths in, when I click out of this, I'm going to get this error indicating that the overall length is less than the length below the tool holder. For right now, we're going to ignore this error and we are going to drop down to our flute length. The flute length is the maximum drilling depth or the length of cut for this particular tool. If you remember correctly, this was 920 thousandths. Going back up right above flute length is we're going to look at the shoulder length and now the length below the holder. These two numbers are directly associated when you actually physically have that drill bit and physically have the holder in hand and you are placing that tool inside of the holder. Well, currently we don't know what this information is is because we don't actually have these tools. So generally speaking, what I do is I'll take a look at a number that's slightly above our flute length. However, it needs to be less than our overall length. For this example, we are going to use one inch for both the shoulder length and also one inch for length below the holder. Obviously, once we set up this tool is we can come in and override these values. Notice now that I have updated those fields is our pictogram has updated and we have no errors present. The next tab that we are going to take a look at is our holder tab. Our holder tab is what device are we going to use to actually hold this tool with? And there's a whole variety of different holders that exist out there. You have to think of a tool holder as like an adapter between the cutting tool and the machine's spindle. Now there are 30 tapered holders, there are 40 tapered holders, there are 50 tapered holders. Those are the generally the most common diameter holders out there. And within those diameters is there's also BT standard, CAT standard, and now there's a new standard called HSK. These interfaces are directly associated with the machine that is going to be running these parts for you. In our example is both of our CNC machines use a CAT40 spindle. So for this example, we are going to select a CAT40 ER32 holder. And the exact holder I'm going to use is an ER32 stub length holder, 
which generally has about a two and a half inch protrusion length to it. So I'm gonna click on that and then select this holder. Notice now the pictogram on the right hand side has updated. The purpose of selecting our tool holder here is when we simulate our tool paths, we can demonstrate to see if our tool holder is gonna make any type of collision with our part. Afterwards, we are gonna hit the blue accept button in the bottom right hand corner. And now we have our new tool in our tool library. This concludes how to create a tool library and a tool with inside of it.